Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer. You know, two communist soldiers were standing near the Berlin Wall during the Cold War, and one said to the other, Are you thinking what I'm thinking? And the other one said, I am. And the first one said, I'm going to have to arrest you then. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Twilight Struggle, Red Sea, Conflict in the Horn of Africa by GMT Games. We'll get back to the review in just a moment. I want to take a minute to ask you to check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about history, books on history, military history. I even post some of my uh, lectures for my classes on there. Please check that out. Please subscribe to that channel. And now, back to the review. In Twilight Struggle, Red Sea, Conflict in the Horn of Africa, from GMT Games, two players take on the roles of either the United States or the Soviet Union as they compete for influence in Africa and the Middle East. Now this game is essentially a game of Twilight Struggle. If you're familiar with the basics of Twilight Struggle, which we covered in our very first episode of The Discriminating Gamer back in 2014, um, you'll be very familiar with this game. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of the basics. I'm pretty much going to talk to you about generally how the game plays and its uh, kind of relationship with its older brother. Now, in this game, essentially, the map is just of kind of Eastern Africa and uh, the Middle East. Now, you have two decks of cards here. You have the uh, mid-war deck and the late-war deck. You're going to go ahead and you're going to shuffle those, and from the mid-war deck, you're going to deal out nine cards to each player. Now, just like in regular Twilight Struggle, you have a headline phase. Essentially, you play a card um, that you, you, you play the event from, and then, of course, you look at the number, you determine who goes first. Usually, it's going to be the, the um, Soviet player. But you go ahead then, and you take turns during the action rounds playing cards. Now, just like in Twilight Struggle, you have event cards that have an operations point value and a, an event. Now, when you play the card, if you are the United States, you can play the blue star uh, and uh, you play for the operational points or the event. But if you're the United States player and it's got you know the red star, then you can't play it for the event. You can only play it for the operational points value. But when you play it, the event triggers and it helps the Soviet player. So just very similar to the way uh, good old-fashioned Twilight Struggle plays here. So you're playing through these cards. You do have the option to burn cards in the space race here as well, so you don't have to activate them. But you're playing these cards, and you're trying to, with the operational points, you're trying to essentially spread your influence throughout Africa. You're trying to control states by reaching kind of their, their uh, stability number. If you have as much influence as the st stability number of a country and there's no enemy influence, then you control that region. If anybody else wants to put influence in there, it costs them two operation points instead of just one. But if they get one in there, you lose control because you have to have the, the difference between the number uh, you have and they have has to be equal to or greater than the stability number of the country in order for you to control it. Now, just like in Twilight Struggle, you can do coups, you can do realignment rolls, you can try to find ways to, to get more influence in these countries. Now, critically, you have the battlefield countries, you're trying to control them, and there's also two other special uh, countries that you're trying to get control of here, and that is Ethiopia and Somalia. Having control of them in mid-war can really help you out as well. But you're going through, you are trying to extend your influence, you're trying to get as much influence as you can in the countries. Now, just like in regular Twilight Struggle, uh, you're going to have scoring cards. Well, you go ahead, and if you play a scoring card, you're going to get, uh, you know, presence, domination, control. You're looking for how many states you control. You're looking if you control those battlegrounds. You're looking for all of these things. And then, of course, you've got the tug-of-war tug scoring system at the bottom. But you play through the mid-war, and then you go to the uh, late war. The mid-war focuses more on Africa. The mid-war focuses more on the Middle East. So you're going ahead. You're trying to play through each of these 
of these regions, and you're trying to get the most points. Now, instead of the China card, which you have in the regular Twilight Struggle here, you have the Romania card, which essentially functions the same way. The USA player starts with it, and if they play it, it goes over to the uh, Soviets and then goes face down. They can flip it for the next round. Now, this game only lasts two rounds. You just have that mid-war deck and the late war deck. You just play through those. That's it. Now, at any time during the game, uh, you can get an instant victory if, you, if your side reaches 10 victory points. Now, if ever the Africa scoring card is played and one player controls more countries in Africa, including both the flashpoint countries of Somalia and Ethiopia, they instantly win the game. If a nuclear war is triggered, the phasing player automatically loses, their opponent wins the game. Otherwise, at the end of turn two, both regions are scored, and whoever has the most points overall wins! Twilight Struggle, Red Sea, Conflict in the Horn of Africa. So this game is Twilight Struggle, just compressed into two turns. Now, like any sane person on the planet today, I'm a big fan of Twilight Struggle. The original Twilight Struggle is one of the absolute classics. Absolutely phenomenal game. Um, and I love that game because the theme is great and the theme comes through so well in that game. But also, too, I love the fact that... Um, I've said this before. I've never played a game that, that forced players to make the best of bad choices every single round. And this game does that. You constantly have all these cards that have your enemy's color on it. And you want to play them for the operational points, but you're just handing a gift to your enemy. And it's just painful. But you have to do it. I love that so much. I love, love, love um, how that works out every game I play. That feeling of just, oh, this is terrible, this is terrible, but maybe I can get lucky. Or maybe maybe my opponent's going to play cards that help me. And so there's a lot of fun stuff like that, that that happens in this game. It's 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 just a brain burner, and it is so much fun. Well, this, of course, tries to give you the exact same experience, but in a much more compressed time. And it does. And you really, really do get that feeling of Twilight Struggle. Now, you don't get the quite the epicness because, you know, in Twilight Struggle, you can know, oh, I'm really I'm down in the dumps at this point, but I know I can turn it around because i got all this time. Here, you, 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 it's, it's kind of unforgiving, which is okay because it's such a short game, right? You've got to be on the ball here. You've got to be on the ball. I played this with Sean, who uh, I played my very first game of Twilight Struggle with Sean like 10, 10 11 years ago. Uh, it was the first time I played it, and we both fell in love with it. And we were playing it again, and we're like, oh, this is so cool, this is so fun. It's the same game, but it's smarter, it, it's smaller, it's shorter. And uh, we, we, we got a kick out of it. We really had fun with it. It's a game that just, it brings everything you love about Twilight Struggle, but in a much shorter, much more compact time frame, which is freaking awesome. This would never replace the original Twilight Struggle for me. I like that big epic feel of that game, but I'm definitely hanging on to this one. Gonna play this one when I just want to, to play a, a quick game, but still get that Twilight Struggle vibe from it. And frankly, I'd be, I would be—I think it'd be really cool if they could find a way to make more of these kind of smaller versions. Maybe a, a Twilight Struggle that takes place, you know, maybe just in the Central and South America, uh, or in Asia. I mean, I think I think they could do some really fun things with this if they wanted to keep doing it. I realize that's an investment in time, but I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. Investment in time for them to develop it, right? Anyway, I'm babbling now. Really enjoyed uh, this version of Twilight Struggle. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, I think if you've never played Twilight Struggle before, too, this would be a good place to start. I think you could really get into the game, learn the basic rules of the game playing this which would be much, much easier than jumping into the big game, which can be a little intimidating at times, but I got to tell you, I love it. Recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer for Twilight Struggle, uh, Red Sea, Conflict in the Horn of Africa is buy it. Thank you once again for joining us today on the Discriminating Gamer. Please sub to this channel. We really appreciate that. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think. I really enjoy feedback. What are your thoughts on this game? Have you played it yet? Do you want to play it? Let me know. I really, really, really am curious. Uh, also, too, uh, please, uh, you know, check us out on Facebook, on Twitter. Communicate with us there. We really like that. Please, please, please check out my other channel. That is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history. Fun things like that. I even post some of my lectures from my courses on there. Please check that out. And also, too, ladies and gentlemen, I would ask you uh, to uh, please leave a thumb to this video on Board Game Geek. That helps us out as well. You know, ladies and gentlemen, the Hungarians used to have a saying, and it was, uh, communism is the noble struggle to help the people overcome the problems created by communism. Yeah.
you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please somebody help me on my feet again.